On a construction site, there are likely to be a lot of issues when it comes to handling concrete. Now, these issues will result in defects in our concrete members. So the purpose of this video is to highlight some of these uh, issues that take place on a construction site. Now, an outline of what we will be talking about in this video, I'll be talking about the segregation issue that takes place uh, in a concrete mix. We'll also be reviewing what, co what a high water content does to a concrete mix, uh, the results of poor compaction, inadequate cover, the curing issues that are associated with our concrete members, and then finally we'll be talking about incorrect rear placement and incorrect joint placement. Remember that in terms of the classification of defects, uh, this video will talk about construction. In the previous videos we've already discussed physical, chemical and structural defects in concrete. Now operations on the construction side, as I said, they do impact the quality of the final product. So your concrete, once it's poured, uh, that concrete quality is dependent on how it was mixed, how it was transported, how the pouring of the concrete uh, has had taken place, and then what sort of what's the level of vibration that was conducted as the concrete was poured. Any inconsistency in the uniformity of the concrete mix will lead to construction defects. Um, one major factor of, control, of controlling these uh, construction defects is through the training of construction personnel on the appropriate ways of dealing with concrete. Now let's talk about the first uh, construction defect that is common in concrete members and that is segregation. This is where the coarse aggregates are separated from the rest of the mix. And you can see that in the image uh, in front of you. So mixes that have low sand content, it's very, uh, it's very likely that this issue of segregation will take place. This is where your concrete mix segregates. Another common cause of segregation is over vibration when you over compact your uh, concrete mix. In addition, if you're pouring concrete at an excessive height and if you're doing it in the, in, in the incorrect way, then that would lead to segregation. And segregation results in this honeycombing uh, pattern that you see in the image. Now, concrete bleeding is again related to segregation when the uh, cement paste cannot hold the large aggregates and when segregation takes place, so when these aggregates, they sort of uh, drop down, uh, water rises in the concrete mix and this rise of water means that you have more water on the surface, the surface is more uh, permeable, it's weaker uh, and this is what we refer to as concrete bleeding. Now when the water rises on the surface due to uh, concrete bleeding you get more evaporation of the water off the surface and hence you are likely to experience more plastic shrinkage cracking. As I said, it's very important when you pour concrete that you do it in the right way. You can see uh, on the image how what, what, uh, what the correct way is. So that's on the left-hand side. The incorrect way on the right-hand side, you can see how the mix keeps on uh, bumping into the formwork as it's poured inside this column. And this process, what it does is it, it encourages the mix to segregate. And it creates all these issues of segregation for us in our concrete, in our finalized concrete uh, column. The second construction defect that we will be talking about in this video is a defect that's associated with a high water content. If you increase the water content in your concrete mix, what will happen is that you'll get a, a workable concrete, so it's easier to pour, it's easier to transport. However, the downside is that too much water will lead to a concrete mix that's not as strong. Uh, you will also experience issues in terms of bleeding and, and shrinkage. Uh, in addition, it's very likely that you will get surface crazing due to the high water content. Now to prevent that issue from happening, make sure that the water to cement ratio in your concrete mix follows what was recommended in uh, the standards. The third construction defect that is common on construction sites is poor compaction, so poor vibration of the concrete. It's important to vibrate, to vibrate your concrete mix because this helps get rid of air bubbles in your concrete mix. 
If you fail to do so, then you end up with a permeable concrete mix that's excessively porous and non-homogeneous. And that means that structurally it's not as strong and it's very likely that excessive chemical attacks will take place in the concrete due to that poor compaction. If you, however, overcompact your concrete, so if you increase the vibration rate to above a certain limit, then you will automatically get segregation of the mix. The correct way of vibrating your concrete is what you see on the image in front of you. Make sure that the vibrator is located uh, straight into uh, the concrete mix and avoid holding it at a diagonal to avoid this issue of segregation. Inadequate cover is again another construction defect that's common on construction sites and this is where the steel reinforcement that's embedded in your concrete members, they do not have sufficient space between them and the surface of the concrete. Now what that leads to is it leads to uh, increased chemical attacks. It's easier for chloride ions for instance to penetrate and get to the uh, steel reinforcement and hence lead to corrosion. Uh, AS3600, which is the Concrete Australian Standards, they specify what the cover is, so that distance that you should maintain between the steel reinforcement, the surface of it and the surface of your concrete, what that distance should be depending on the compressive strength of your concrete. With an inadequate cover, as I said, um, because the distance is shorter, you have an increased chance of moisture pen penetrating your concrete, um, and the result is excessive cracking along with spalling of, of the concrete due uh, to the increased corrosion that will take place. Now, when it comes to curing as well, it's another defect that's very common in a construction site. Uh, construction personnel usually uh, lack training in terms of curing, and some people do not do it for the required period of time, so people might cure the concrete say for maybe a day or two, when it's supposed to be happening uh, regularly and for, for longer durations. Now with poor curing, what you're doing is you're replacing the water that's lost due to hydration. Remember, hydration is a chemical reaction. It releases a lot of heat. It utilizes a lot of the water that's present in the mix. When, if you do use the water, you need to replace it, and curing is what is the process of replacing that water. Now, if you don't replace the water, what you will start to notice is you start to notice cracks appearing on the surface. Uh, so it's very vital that you conduct uh, this uh, curing regime very rigorously once your concrete is created. The incorrect placement of steel rio in concrete members is another common construction defect. Now remember that the whole point of having steel reinforcement in our concrete members is to increase their tensile strength. Concrete is uh, strong in compression, weak in tension. In order to overcome that weakness, we add steel reinforcement. If you place the steel, the steel in an incorrect fashion, then you might impact the tensile strength of the concrete, and as such, you will get issues when it comes to flexural strength. Now if we look at, for example, cantilevers, if you have balconies, let's say for instance, these would be classified as uh, cantilevers in most of the cases, balconies or buildings, they fail, and most of the failure is due to the fact that the steel reinforcement was placed very low in the concrete member, when in reality you should have reinforced the top part of the concrete member as well to ensure that you are handling the tensile stresses that are exerted on the cantilever. The final construction defect that we will be talking about in this video is the incorrect joint placement in concrete members. Now the reason that we need joints uh, in concrete members is say for instance you had this huge slab that you wanted to pour and concrete takes time to arrive to your site so you start pouring and then you have to wait a bit before the next batch of concrete arrives so during that waiting period uh, the concrete that was poured starts to set um, and so there will be this uh, difference, different interface that, that is created between that poured concrete and then the, the section that is yet to be poured. So to avoid that, what we do is we place a joint uh, and this is to make sure that we create a, hom uh, a homogeneous uh, structure overall. Uh, another reason for having joints is, uh, let's say for example, 
uh, you had excessive drying shrinkage and you were trying to avoid that, to one method of avoiding that volumetric change is through uh, having joints embedded in your concrete members. Now, if you incorrectly place these joints, uh, you could potentially uh, alter the structural integrity of your concrete because you know the joint is not achieving what it's supposed to be achieving, i.e. handling the volumetric changes, and that can, can lead to cracks in your concrete surface. For references, do check out uh, these two links uh, that you see in front of you. I do hope that this video has helped clarify some of the construction defects that are common when it comes to handling concrete on a construction site.